Hello and welcome to this webinar. My name is Anas Sabah and I'm a solutions architect with AWS. In this webinar, I'm going to talk about what is mutual TLS and how can you enable it on an application load balancer to authenticate clients. Let's get started. The agenda for this webinar is, first we will discuss mutual TLS and then we will cover what problems it solves. Then, go through mutual TLS support on application load balancer or what we know as ALB and what are the two supported modes. After that, we will jump to the AWS console and implement mutual TLS on ALB. And finally, we will wrap up the webinar with few references. So what is mutual TLS? To understand mutual TLS, we need to first visit TLS and have a brief recap. TLS stands for Transport Layer Security, also formally known as SSL. It is a cryptographic protocol used to secure communication over a network and encrypt the data transmission between a client and a server. TLS establishes a secure encrypted connection by having the server authenticate itself to the client and typically, and that happens typically using a digital certificate. So it is a one-way authentication where the users can authenticate the server and ensure they are connecting to the legit server. Then the client and server exchange certain information to come up with the symmetric key that they use to encrypt the traffic for the session. Now let's look at mutual TLS. As the name suggests, it is mutual authentication between client and server. During the handshake, the client is also going to present the certificate and the server will verify that in order to continue the TLS handshake process and establish the secure connection. That means the client is issued a certificate by the service owner and the server needs to be aware of that and how to validate the certificate. Mutual TLS is often used in zero trust network concepts, which means there is no implicit trust. Instead, there is continuous verification for each client, user, device, or network traffic. So what problems are we solving with mutual TLS? When we need authentication, but login process is not followed. When there is a machine to machine communication, such as IoT devices, microservices, business-to-business -business data exchanges, and even VPNs. We don't want to hard code username passwords on machines. This is definitely not a good practice. It is also needed in situations where access needs to be restricted for certain machines or client, but their IP addresses are dynamic or constantly changing. So we can't add the client IPs on our firewall to restrict the traffic. Mutual TLS also help prevent different cyber attacks, such as man-in-the-middle attacks, spoofing attacks, uh, other attacks related to credentials like uh, brute force and phishing attacks. Now we understand mutual TLS. Let's see how it is implemented on ALB. Previously, mutual TLS was not supported on ALB. Customers had to use other services such as API Gateway, but in the last re-event, we announced the support of MTLS on ALBs. With this announcement, ALB can handle the authentication management and reduce the load on the backend applications. When you enable it, only trusted clients with issued certifications can access the applications running behind that ALB. The ALB provides two modes. First is pass-through, which means the ALB will not validate and simply sends the whole client certificate chain to the target using HTTP headers. Then by using the client certificate chain, you can implement corresponding authentication and authorization logic in your application. With MTLS Verify, ALB will validate the client certificate during TLS negotiations or TLS handshake. So how to get started with mutual TLS on ALB? There are different steps depending on the MTLS mode you choose. For pass-through, you just need to configure the listener with this option and the ALB will start sending the certificate to the backend. On the other hand, for verify mode, you first need to have the certificate bundle ready 
from a third party certificate authority or AWS private certificate authority. Then upload the certificate bundle to an S3 bucket. You can also optionally upload the revocation list if needed. Then you will create a trust store with the S3 path and attach the trust store to the HTTPS listener of the ALB. Please note that you can create the trust store during the creation of an ALB or a new listener on an existing ALB, and that gets attached automatically. But if you want to add mutual TLS to existing listener, then we need to create the trust store first under the EC2 console, and then attach it to the existing HTTPS listener. All right, it's time for the demo. I'm at the AWS console, and I will go to EC2 console. On the left-hand side, I'll scroll down to load balancers. Click on create load balancer. Application load balancer. And then let's give it a name. Scroll down, you can choose the option. I'm good with internet facing, IPv4 or dual stack. The network mappings, just going to choose just random. Availability zones, go to the security group. For the listeners, I'm assuming I'm having one for HTTP with port 80. I'll just choose target group. Then I will add the HTTPS listener. Change that to HTTPS listener. I can keep the default port 443 or I can change it. Then I will choose the default action. I'll send it to one of my target groups. Then scroll down, you'll see the secure listener settings. You can change the TLS policies, choose the certificate. I already have one certificate from ACM. This is for the server side certificate. Now scroll down, you'll see the client certificate handling. This is how we enable it. We click on this box. Then we'll have the two modes, the pass through mode and the verify with trust store. So if it is passed through, there is nothing else is needed. Just that option, you can save it, and the ALB will start passing those client certificates to the backends. If you choose to have the ALB verify the client certificates, then we can click on this option. We'll get more advanced settings. How you want the handling of those client certificates? Do you want to allow expired certificates or you don't want to allow them? The recommended option is to not allow those expire certificates. So I'll keep that selected. For the trust store, I either have one created outside or I can just create it here while I'm creating the LV as we discussed earlier. So I'm gonna I'm going to do that and just give it a name. And then provide the path where I stored my certificate bundle. So you just paste it here. And if you don't have the path handy, you can just simply click click on browse S3 and choose that S3 bucket and choose the object. If you have a certificate revocation list, it's optional, but you can also add the path in here. And that's pretty much it for MTLS. You can just scroll down. If there's any other options you'd like to change. You review it and then click create load balancer. It will take a couple minutes for the load balancers to be provisioned. Everything went through and now this load balancer has MTLS enabled and will verify the client certificate in verify mode. And then if it is not available, then the connection won't be established or completed. If, if you want to create trust stores and then later attach them to HTTPS listener, that is also possible through this option. You can see it here, trust stores and you can simply create that one. This is that this is the one that we created during the creation of the load balancer. So if you need to create more for future and attach them to existing load balancers, you can do that from this step. I will just quickly show you it's a similar process. You provide the name, you provide the path for the certificate handle, the sorry bundle. And if there's any revocation, you can add it here and you can simply create the trust tool. And this concludes our demo. Let's wrap up this webinar with references. 
Here are a few references to read more about MTLS concept and MTLS implementation on application load balancer. I added the links for the AWS documentation and an AWS blog that talks about MTLS on ALB. Finally, I added the link to the MTLS RFC if you need to dive deeper into this concept. With that, I would like to thank you so much for watching and I hope this webinar was useful to you. Bye for now and have a great rest of the day.